Hello and welcome back to the Nightmare Cabin and welcome to a new edition of Let's Talk About, the show where I give a retrospective of a band, I go through their entire catalogue, so it's Let's Talk About and then we insert the name now. And today I'm talking about, this has been, I've not put it off, I've really been wanting to do this for a long time, I've just not been able to get round to doing it and I wanted to do it properly, so here we are. No further ado, we are doing it. So, we are talking about, if you can't hear them in the background, and you've not guessed, it's the almighty monstrosity. Now, anyone asks the question in a forum, or, you know, who's the most underrated death metal band, or who's an underrated band, straight away, monstrosity. Tip of my tongue every time. Um, what band should be huge? What death metal band should be monstrosity every single time this band should be massive and unfortunately they're not as big as they should be now they're well respected and they're pretty well known and the people that know know their stuff are well aware that monstrosity are the awesome band that they are and they're all revered musicians they're all being hired by other you know sort of bigger bands and whatnot but i think we've got a stellar close to perfect back catalogue here and um does the back, perfect back catalogue exist? I mean, I don't know. It's um, six main albums here, and I think at their absolute worst, it's an eight out of ten. Even the, 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 my least favourite album, I still really like. And again, the quality is always maintained. So I guess we'll get into it, no further ado. Let's have a... I don't get Eric Sobright in here as well. It looks like a sunny day, doesn't it? Everywhere else in the house, I've got lights on. It's dull, grey, it's absolutely pissing down. It's practically, it's going to be night time in a minute. But for some reason in here, it's really bright. So, Anyway, shall we crack on? Monstrosity were formed in 1990. Now, it was formed by Lee Harrison and I think John Rubin was in the original lineup, if I remember correctly. And uh, what it was, they were in the original lineup of Malevolent Creation. They did the, I think it was the very first Malevolent Creation demo. Let me just look that up actually quickly. We were, um, yeah, Lee Harrison was on the 1989, they did two demos with Malevolent Creation in 1989, and I'm pretty sure John Rubin was on that one as well. Yeah, I was right. So. Whatever happened, I don't know, but they they split from Monst um, Malevolent Creation and then formed Monstrosity when, uh, I'll try and uh, pronounce my T's with my accent. I always skip the T's and the R's and all the rest of it. Um, now, the f Ten Commandments, the first Malevolent Creation album, I can't remember the songs off the top of my head, but there's two songs on Ten Commandments that Lee Harrison is in the writing credits he wrote the main riff for can't remember off the top of my head but if you get the um, the special edition of the Ten Commandments that was out on Hammerheart Records last year the two disc edition the demo that Lee's on is on that and if you get the two disc demo compilation that I showed a couple of videos ago Lee Harrison's on that as well and it's awesome I'm not you know generally speaking for me demos are you buy them to collect, you know, complete the collection. But those demos are definitely worth getting hold of. So, um, first off, we have the Horror Infinity demo, and then we have the Burden of Evil single and the Malen. You've got, yeah, you've got a Horror Infinity demo, which we'll get to. I've got that on a compilation, and um, we've got the Burden of Evil immense Malagency, Malagency single. And then next up we have the Darkest Dream Horror Infinity single, which I've got. So, it's all got a bit blurry, I don't focus yet. One of my prized possessions. Old George there, doing what he's known for. And that's the uh, band on the back there. As far as I'm aware, th yeah, this is... Uh, this is on going to be on the uh, album. It's not like a separate recording or anything. But this is a limited edition, only a thousand made, and uh, it cost a pretty penny. I won't lie. But yeah, nice and plain. It 
So then we go on to the first album, the one you all know. Imperial Doom. Now, not only has it got one of the best album artworks, this album is just absolutely phenomenal. There's not much really to show off. There's an um, early shot there of old George looking like Anthony Kiedis from the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Awesome photo there of the band, all looking young. <laughs> um, now, with Malevolent Creation, they kind of fell into that same gap as sort of Demolition Hammer or someone like that, where or Solstice, who had Rob Barrett in. Um, you had that little gap between thrash metal and death metal. You kind of knew the difference between the two, but then there was a couple of bands just. This first album does kind of walk that line, but it does lean more towards um, death metal, I would think. Um, but Imperial Dome, it, you know, every song on this, all nine songs of this are just absolutely fantastic. And it just plays, it's just an effortless play. Um, I spoke to Lee Harrison and um, we did a pretty in-depth interview actually. If you want to pick up this edition, of Metal Legion. I do a pretty in-depth um, interview with Lee and then there's a little side section where we go through the whole catalogue. Now I think he gets pretty fed up with ask, people asking him if this is ever going to get reissued. I pretty much think this is a bootleg. I did get it on Amazon for about $15.99 and even then I did think fucking hell that's cheap. So either someone didn't know what they were selling or it is a bootleg but bootlegs on Amazon are... anyway Either way, I've managed to finally get hold of a copy. But um, he wasn't happy with the way it's produced, but it sounds great. It sounds awesome. Um, yeah, I, I, you could. I think anyone who's been in the music industry as long as they have would go back and re-record their first album. Of course they would, you know. But it sounds fine. It sounds, you know, abs absolute. If I was really going to be strict about production, I'd just say it sounds of its time. It sounds perfectly fine to me it sounds raw energetic balls to the wall absolutely unforgiving i mean imperial doom the opening track is um it's got this sort of chaotic lead but leads into this lovely slow sabbath riff before sort of building back up with a blistering sort of melodic solo um melody plays a big part in this actually i mean you think the first couple of albums are like really like really brutal and really balls to the wall and sort of the melodic stuff comes later on in the catalog but I would say, if you listen to this and then go straight to the new album, The uh, Passage of Existence, you can kind of see little hints in this album. They're sort of in the background and over the course of the catalogue they come more and more to the forefront, if that makes sense. So it plays like a big part, but it was it's more predominant in later releases, but the hints are here. So a track like uh, Ceremonial Void or Vicious Mental First. Listen to those two songs, and you'll know what I mean. Especially if you're into the newer stuff, go back and listen to them too. You go, yeah, kind of, you know. But um, Definitive Inquisition, I think that is the song. Yeah, the second track, real sort of thrashy and catchy. Um, Ceremony of all Void, which I mentioned earlier, has got real pummeling drums. It reminds me a little of um, early Deicide, actually, and. Um, it has that awesome hooky chorus, that destroy me, you know, really fun, destroy me, you know, and uh, also a really nice melodic solo section, and um, immense, is it immense, yeah, immense malegency, number four, sort of like a, it all goes kind of cosmic and sort of spacey in the solo section of that, it's really, fucking, it's really cool, and um, vicious uh, mental first as well, Nice melodic shredding, awesome sort of melodic atmosphere. It's got like this beautiful clean section in the middle, and when it kicks in, this like nice little clean section just blows out, and then George just gives this scream going over it, and he just holds it over this quiet section. It's just awesome. And um, Burden of Evil as well. I think that, yeah, that, that's got another um, again. It's a bit of a spacey, weird solo, and that was the. Uh, Horror Infinity as well, classic riff, which um, sort of climbs up as the thing goes on. But one thing that set Monstrosity aside as well was their lyrics. The um, they weren't about gore; it was all about science fiction and sort of other cosmic, 
you know, trying to think of it. I guess a bit of HP Lovecraft, I suppose, a bit of cosmic horror as well. But it was all very otherworldly rather than just zombies and gore and whatnot. But um, let's go for the lineup. Everyone on this album is in full form as well. Obviously, George Corpse Grinder gives a fantastic vocal performance on this. You can see why a band like Cannibal Corpse picked him up. Lee Harrison, obviously, always great on drums. John Rubin, great on the guitar. Mike Van Erp um, on bass, who went on to join Cynic. He did the uh, early stuff with them. He was also in, uh, well, he was in Cynic, then he was in Malevolent Creation, then he was in Monstrosity. So he did all the uh, demos. I like Silix demos, I don't really like the albums, I know how wanker that makes me sound. Um, and then he went on to uh, do Solstice, which uh, had Alex Marquez and Rob Barrett, who went on to join Malevolent Creation, and then Rob Barrett went on to join Cannibal Corpse as well. Oh, John Rubin as well, he came, he went, joined, he did a couple of albums with Malevolent Creation actually, didn't he? I know he did um, Doomsday X, but he also did Stillborn and Eternal, you know, the fronted ones with um, Jay on vocals so yeah all star lineup on this and yeah you can again not the most original album but it's up there with whatever your classic album is this stands up next to it and it absolutely phenomenal but it's not Mastrosity's best it all gets better trust me folks the, everyone bangs on about this album but the rest of the stuff is awesome so this is what we're getting into now. So next up we have um, we have Millennium, which was so Imperial Doom was released in 1992. Millennium was released in 1996, buddy hell. So right at this point, George has actually got the job in Cannibal Cops, and Jason Avery as from. Eulogy uh, takes over on vocals. Now, if you got you, this is from um, what are they called? Dark Symphonies. Got the. Um, this is both the band's demos. It's like a demo and a single or something like that. It's basically everything they did on one CD. This was impossible to get hold of at what, that's some point, but definitely check this out. Um, Jared Pritchard on guitars as well, who went on to be one of the, um, well, apart from Eric Rutan, and he's who you get to do your death metal album. Basically, he's just he's done all the 1349 albums. He's fucking awesome. He's got a really good band as well. Who's um, oh my god, I'm having a brain fart. Pertra Norta or something like that really good doom band if you're into Paradise Lost and stuff like that but we'll get on to them I might get Jarrett on the show actually at some point but yeah anyway so George is already in Cannibal Corpse at this point but they ask him to do this album um, so Jason Avery has left Eulogy joins Monstrosity on vocals now personally I think they should just let George go but I think it was you know the Cannibal Corpse thing they made him do the album and Jason did the backing vocals on the album. But uh, let's have a quick look as well. You've got other lineup changes. So Jason Morgan has joined on guitar. Uh, Jason Morgan was also in the band called Alice with Eric Rutan from, well, Morbid Angel, Ripping Corpse, and now Hate Eternal, as well as a couple of other projects. Uh, Divine Empire, he did a little bit of work with them as well. Um, so he's in on guitar. And Kerry Conlon is now on bass now he's on the next album as well he's done a whole multitude of projects but most notably he was on Death's Symbolic which if you know this channel I consider if not one of if not the greatest metal albums ever recorded so you got George still on vocals but pretty much doing it as a session session Jason Avery's the vocalist from now on but he does do the backing vocals Kerry Conlon on bass Jason Morgan on guitar, so a new guitarist, new bass player. Singer's got one foot out the door, but also the almighty Lee Harrison is still on drums. So I've got a promo copy here. 
back when this was impossible to get hold of, it's still kind of hard, um, but I managed to pick this up. If you can, I'm trying to get a bit. I think this might be a bootleg, I'm not sure. I picked up on Discogs. Um, I have bought stuff directly from Lee. I, um, I bought a couple of t-shirts from the Conquest Music website. So, if the digi pack off something like that, might, I might get another version of it. There's not much to look at inside. Now, this artwork, no, it's not eggs. <laughs> They're planets. And if you look at some of the t-shirts that have been printed recently, let's quickly go. So, these people here, if you notice, he's holding a planet in his hand and it's going through a portal. There's a new t-shirt but that's the portal that it's going through. So it all kind of adds up. Um, Millennium is much more brutal, much more technical, much more balls to the wall. Um, to be honest, I mean, this is probably, this is a phenomenal album, don't get me wrong, but it's probably my least favourite. And um, it kind of lacks, uh, don't get me wrong, it's, like the opening track, Fake Millennium, is just a classic monstrosity song. You know, like Slaves and Masters as this, you know, it's brutal as ever, but it goes into this nice, slow, sort of bolt thrower each style riff in the middle. Um, but yeah, everything's much more preci like it's, it's precision. Everything's more concise and it's all just brutal. Um, I like how Dream Messiah um, begins. A little like um, Ghost of War by Slayer, as that sort of quiet sort of drum, and then just kick, boom, just explodes into the speakers. Uh, Fragments of Resolution gives a slight pulse breath, because uh, that's a nice slow doomy number. Um, awesome climatic solo though, and um, nice melodic clean ending. And Seas of Change, yeah, the the closing track Seas of Change is just fucking phenomenal, right? It's, like I say, it's not bad in any way. Nothing monstrosity ever did was bad. It's just not my particular favourite. It standout songs I think are a little lacking on this one. But play it front to back in one. What's this? Half hour long? It's a great album to listen to in one go. If you're on a drive, doing a run, 40 minutes. Yeah, it's just a 40 minute assault. And um, Seas of Change, the last song. It's like two and a half minutes, and it is just. It's just balls to the wall, just absolutely phenomenal. Like I say, if this is as bad. Like I say, this is my least favourite. If this is as bad as it gets, then yeah, we're we're doing well. And um, like I say, it's, it's not bad. I'm by any stretch of the imagination. It's just yeah, what my favourite is yet to come. Put it that way. But that is them at their most brutal, their most technical. And again, um, Lee mentioned in the interview that I did I've interviewed Lee a couple of times actually I did it once for uh, the metal show with Gully and Joe the podcast and once for Metal Legion and he said as good as that album is to listen to it was a bit of an arsehole to play live because the um, audience didn't really react to the songs they didn't really march didn't really move they kind of just sort of just sort of nodded along and just were trying to keep up with it so moving forward they wanted to they kept in mind music that people could react to in a live show. So, moving on, the next album. A few, another, I think this is slightly more lineup changes, but um, so in 1999, we have yeah, pretty much the same lineup. So Tony Norman's still on guitar. Lee Harrison still on the drums, Kerry Conlon still on bass, and Jason Avery now has um, stepped up to the frontman position and released one of my all-time favourite death metal albums, hands down, phenomenal. And um, also of note, this album written, I think about six or seven of the songs are co-written by Jay Fernandez from. Brutality. We will be doing a Let's Talk About video about them. Now, I love Jay. Um, awesome guy. 
and what Jay does, he writes melodic, emotional riffs and solos. And um, well, let me just have a quick look. He does the uh, co-writing on tracks, uh, Destroying Divinity, The Angels Venom. Fucking love that song. And then um, track seven through to ten, so uh, suffering of the conquered, eye of the judgment, perpetual war, and war, and embraced in apathy. He said uh, again. I spoke to Jay. He said at the time it was basically him and him and Leach jamming, um, and did those songs together, just the two of them. So obviously, George has now gone on to uh, Cannibal Colts and Jason Avery. This is his first time in the spotlight. He'd obviously done the tour for Millennium, but just as good a vocalist. Awesome. He's an awesome death metal vocalist. He's got amazing range, growls, deep, nice deep growls, nice high screams. He's got a menacing um, presence. He's got a great, you know, watch videos from this time as well. The guy's got awesome stage presence and awesome demeanour about him. He's a bit more... Uh, he used to wear like the old spiky bands and all the rest of it and um, he's a tattoo artist as well pretty good one as well from what I can tell so he's kind of by the end of it had the whole bodysuit thing going on looks awesome so um, yeah this is one of my all time favourite albums I fucking adore this album um, there's not a bad track on it really um, I'm just trying to think like Destroying Divinity but it, Pretty much everything, every song on this has got a perfect balance. Everything is perfectly paced. Everything, everything from real melodic shredding that you, look, the main riffs you remember the riffs. The riffs are catchy. The shredding, you know, it's everything is just melodic. Everything sticks in your mind, and everything just the songs are perfectly set out. And um, every song just. Fucking amazing! I can't. I don't know really what my uh, a song like Angels Venom. It's just oh, when it dun, bah, bah, bah. and then that just that riff that. It's fucking and then. I mean, I had in Dark Fury stuck in my head the other day. It was just and um, dust to dust. The, the, these are all. Oh, oh, every song on this is just amazing. Um, I really like as well. Kind of the closing track is the Pillars of um, the Pillars of Dream, is it? Uh, what nice slow instrumental, the Pillars of Drea. It's just and then it finishes with a fucking amazing the death metal version of Angel of Death by Slayer. Which they obviously did live. That became like a staple of their live show. But yeah, absolutely phenomenal album. I mean, it's up there. I mean, so I'll have to do a top ten of my death metal albums. But yeah, this is one of my favourite death metal albums, full stop, and one of the most underrated albums ever. I mean, one thing I've got to mention as well. I mean, album covers weren't their strong point, but don't let that put you off because <laughs> they. Um, the music speaks for itself. So next up, we've got a uh, compilation. This is two discs. I've got a uh, promo copy here. Um, disc one is basically a load of odds and sods and demos. You've got a couple of uh, songs from Imperial Doom, but remixed or remastered, whatever. And you've got the uh, demos at the beginning that I told you about. And then disc two is a live album from this tour which is playing in the background so here you go that's a bit gives you an idea of Jason Avery he was a fucking awesome front man um, not much really a show off so yeah this is a bit of an odds and sods collection but it's worth getting it's got an awesome live album and yeah the demos are worth picking up as well so if you can get hold of that it's definitely worth investing in Right, then we have a few more lineup changes. Let's go through it. Um, so, Enslaving the Masses came out, which I just showed you, that came out in 2001. 
and then next up we have a few lineup changes I mean the band constantly had lineup changes and I think it kind of got to the point where Lee was just hiring if he had a tour he just he kind of just hired people that were fit for the job at the time but um, next up we got another live release this is the uh, live extreme um, live extreme Brazilian tour from 2002 um, Michael Poggion po 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 uh, if I fucked your surname up mate I really do apologise Michael Poggion Poggion uh, yeah you, I'm not going to say it but that guy is a fucking beast on the bass he's done a multitude of projects he's kind of like a gun for hire if you look him up on Metal Archives and his CV is just he, the amount of albums that guy's played on um, I don't know if it's Tony Norman or Jason Norman but I keep reading different things but um, he's still on guitar let's have a quick look at what he's done yeah he's still there so he's been on since um, In Dark Purity so you've still got uh, him on Tony on guitar Lee on bass you've now got Michael on I'm just going to call him Mike on bass again the guy's an absolute beast and here we get introduced to a new vocalist Sam Molina who's going to stick around so although Sam this is a limited edition as well not a very long set to be honest um, yeah, you kind of get that but a pretty good one it's all the same oh yeah here we go Yeah, this is a good little collector's item if you can get hold of it. I managed to find it a few years ago, relatively cheap. Um, Destroying Divinity, Dust to Dust off of uh, In Dark Purity, Fatal Millennium from Millennium, uh, Final Cremation. I think that's on Imperial Dome. Um, yeah, I think it's on, I can't remember. Angel's Venom again from In Dark Purity, Imperial Dome, and then they do Rain in Blood and Angel of Death awesome but yeah really good set really good energy right now moving on Jason comes back into the band so Sam kind of gets hired and fired at the same time because um, apparently Sam never was really that comfortable as a like a sole vocalist he was actually a guitar player and was hired because they needed a vocalist so Jason comes back into the band and Sam you're now moving on to guitar so they go from a four piece to five piece. So Michael is now back um, staying on bass, Tony's still on guitar, Lee's still on drums, Sam has now moved from vocals to bass and Jason Avery is back. And in 2003 we get Rise to Power. Now, much like Millennium, this is probably, this and Millennium is probably my least favorite of the bands, but I still give it eight out of 10. It's still an awesome album. There's still some awesome songs on there. Um, the Exordium. Um, there's like a nice breakdown. The Exordium's an awesome, awesome album opener. I mean, that track alone tells you what you're in for. Um, it's less harmonic, less melodic, and this is more straightforward. It's a brutal album. It's a brutal, unforgiving album. But again, like the Rise to Power is a fucking amazing song, and. Um, Awaiting Armageddon, that's got a real nice groovy breakdown in it as well. Um, much like Millennium, it, this isn't very strong when it comes to standout tracks, but playing front to back as one album session, brilliant. Yeah, can't can't fault it really. It's um it's an enjoyable album to listen. And it's kind of become that album where I listen to it the least, but when I do listen to it, I do really enjoy it because it's kind of I just fancy something a bit different I fancy monstrosity but nothing uh, one I don't listen to too often and that's always one to get um, if you get this particular I had this originally but I gave it away when this reissue came out look at those awesome photos um, this is a reissue by Metal Blade I believe and what's cool about this is that it's remastered but Oh, yeah. 
Um, you get some demos on the end of this album with Sam on vocals. So it's worth picking up this reissue just so you got that contrast between the two. Um, Sam leaves the band after this album, and he but he goes on to join Terrorizer. So he's now currently the bass player and vocalist for Terrorizer, and Lee, the drummer, is playing guitar for Terrorizer. So they've done that awesome album, Caustic Attack. So that's Sam Molina on vocals and bass, Lee Harrison on drums, and um, Pete Sandoval legend from Morbid Angel on drums and they also did this live album which is really worth picking up if you can get hold of that so yeah Sam leaves the band but he goes on to other pastures and is still working today awesome vocalist um, so next we have um, 2007 we have spiritual Apocalypse. Now, we have a bunch of lineup changes here. So, my so Lee Harrison still on drums. Michael is still on bass, and now we've got uh, Mark English on guitar, and Matt something. No, Matt Barnes comes later. So this album they're a four piece. Um, so yeah, Mark English on guitar. You've got a bunch of. Uh, a bunch of guest uh, guest musicians doing different like solos and some backing vocals and whatnot. So yeah, Mark English on guitar and Mike Hubravac on vocals. So we get a new vocalist on this one. Uh, Mike Hubravac. Again, I hope you're pronouncing your name probably. So it's all gone blurry. Hold on. Uh, from a band called Divine Rapture. Um, did two albums. It's uh, him and his brother JJ, I believe his name is. Is it JJ Huberbeck? I've had a bit of a. Yeah, it's JJ Huberbeck. He's now in uh, Hate Eternal. He's done the last Hate Eternal albums. Uh, four Hate Eternal albums. He's pretty much Eric Rutan's partner in crime. This camera is pissing me off. Um, he's also got a really good project. This came out this year. Very good, very proggy, very melodic, very technical and widdly widdly and all over the place, but very enjoyable. As a uh, Imo, the third perspective. This is their third album. Really recommend this. Yeah, Mario Vec and um, Huber Vec. He's an artist as well. Does a lot of um, album covers for people. Let me just have a. Now, this album. Fuck. What? Right. You mentioned earlier, I said um, Symbolic, I think is the, uh, just so you know where I stand in it all, like, so, an album like Symbolic by Death. Testimonial of the Ancients, is that the name of the album? Yeah, Testimony of the Ancients. If that's your, if that's your sort of thing of death metal, if you like it a bit melodic, a bit spacey and a bit out there. I put that album, this album, next to them. I put this. This easily will go head to head with Symbolic, and I do not say that lightly. This album is a fucking masterpiece, and more people should know it. It really is as simple as that. It's it's a phenomenal album, and no one knows it. Um, where do I start? The title track kicks in. Is it the f yeah? The Opening tracks the title track, then kicks things off nicely. But Firestorm, oh my god, that album! That song is fantastic. It's just that perfect balance of being melodic and being heavy, just the brutal, it just perfectly intertwines. It's just phenomenal. Beautiful melodic section, a wonderful solo. It's kind of proggy, it's technical, but it's not overindulgent, it's not up its own arse, it's enjoyable, it's fun, um, Apostles of the Endless Night, again with the big melodic section and the technical, uh, again, Chuck Sheldon would be proud to play on this album, um, Divisions of Darkness is just, wow, 
the shredding main riff. Mike's vocals. Mike really, he really is a um, a testament to the band. Oh, that's what I forgot to tell you. On the uh, Rise to Power tour, Brian Warner joined the band um, from oh bollocks what are they called Infernium a couple of monstrosity members played on their first album and then he went on to be in Vital Remains ended up being Vital Remains his longest um, serving vocalist but he never fucking did an album with them um, but he's left them now and he's done a new album with Tim Young a new band with Tim Young I can't quite I, I, I don't think anything's come of that yet to be honest but um, he was an amazing vocalist and he was in Monstrosity for a bit. But yeah, anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, Mike's in the band now. And what a phenomenal vocalist. What a phenomenal lineup the band have now. They've got, in my eyes, the perfect lineup. Again, Michael, I'm not going to pronounce your name. Monster on the bass. Mark English is a perfect harmonic. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but just, yeah, the perfect guitarist for the band. And Mike's just a fucking fantastic vocalist. It's just it, the stuff he does with his voice is just amazing, and he's not just this brutal, like you know he can. The, the, when he really shines is when he holds a scream and just, and I just it just makes it glide. He just holds it, and yeah, absolute remnants of the um, divination, divination as well. The um, oh, I'm trying to think of the riff now. Yes, it. The, the blood spills the walls. It's fucking amazing. Uh, yeah, absolutely phenomenal album. Cannot recommend this enough. Now the band keep the same lineup up until the present day. Um, worth picking up if you get this is Live Apocalypse on the Spiritual Apocalypse Tour. You get a short live set um, from a festival. I'm just trying to focus that a little bit. Um, Studio Apocalypse and some interviews. If you if you want to have a nerd out and um, watch the band doing you know rehearsal footage and recording and whatnot and interviews and yeah, well worth picking up. Not for the casual, casual uh, fan, but if you are into monstrosity, yeah, definitely worth picking up. And then we are led to present day. Eleven years go by. Um, 2007 was Spiritual Apocalypse, and Passage of Existence came out in 2018. And again, when I, this album is an hour long, 57 minutes, and. I think he didn't flat, Lee didn't flat out come out of it, but I think um, he alluded to. Basically, it wasn't by design. They didn't do a toll and just work on an album for 11 years. It was just 11 years went by before they got round to recording one. But in that time, I think what you're getting on this album is the best songs from two albums, if that makes sense. So the songs that were ready for the new album were there, and then another new song comes on, and then that, that pushes out that song, and oh, well, that one's better than them. So those two go, and then just congeal, congeal, and yeah, so you got sort of kind of what would have been two, maybe even three albums. In that 11 years, you've got everything, the best stuff from all that. So you get 12 songs, um, 57 minutes, and he said, he said like, we didn't mind doing 57 minutes, because it had been 11 years, it was more of a case of giving you your money's worth. But what's better, I don't know. I think these two are just, it's Terminator 1 and 2, it's Alien and Aliens, it's its Iron Maiden and Killers, it's Melissa and Don't Break the Oath. That some albums are just, they continue, they're just one after the other. And these albums just perfectly complement each other. Um, Cosmic Pandemia is a great, what I love about it is they don't just, the way that album starts out slow and builds up, it just goes to show they're not in this, they ain't got nothing to prove to anyone. 
they don't have to outbrute or anywhere. The way that song just builds layer upon layer. Um, what's really cool about Kingdom of Fire is the way that the end of the song goes all clean, and then Mike, Mike just does this weird, and it just holds this sinister sounding scream, and then just bang, radiated, just kicks in. Um, the Hive is a bit like um, a bit like the modern version of Angel's Venom or uh, Remnants of Divin Divination. Divination. It's got that. It's just got that off weird, odd timing riff. No, but in the hive, it's fucking awesome. Um, there isn't a bad song on it. I love this album. Absolutely adore it. As much as I love, I adore this whole catalogue. Um, they were meant to be touring. But, you know, as we all know, COVID, the whole lockdown and happened all over the world, that fucked that up. But I just hope that the band are working on new stuff and it's not going to be another living years because this is a phenomenal band with making absolutely stellar music. Wonderful, brilliant death metal. And um, yeah, this is a fantastic back catalogue. So let's go through it. I would say... Let's go for it. I mean, obviously, yeah, that, that album, Imperial Doom has its place in death metal history, and it is a great album, don't get me wrong, but don't just focus on that, because there's so much good stuff. Um, I think these three are my favourites. This one I'd definitely say, you know, start on, but these two as well, absolutely phenomenal albums. You need them in your life, especially if you like your death metal slightly you know a bit technical a bit proggy a bit melodic and then for balls to the wall brutality you want rise to power and millennium yeah I, which ones to start on i think that's a good little mid paced that's a good midway one but there isn't a bad album they are absolutely phenomenal and like i say my two least favorite albums i still love i would still give Beast, like Rise of Power and Millennium. I mean, Millennium, I personally give it 8 out of 10, but it's a 9 out of 10, you know, maybe even a 10 out of 10 album. I just, my personal preference, I just prefer other albums, but every single one is fucking absolutely phenomenal. This band deserve your time and they deserve to be much, much bigger. And um, hats off to Lee Harrison, man, for keeping the thing going since 1990 the fact that the band have had so many lineup changes um, but he's the quality never waned the the musicianship the fact that they maintained the quality for all those years is a testament to itself you know it's, it's absolutely phenomenal and um, yeah you've got six fantastic albums so I'm just going to show you a few little vinyls I've got here these were all reissues. Um, I'll go for this one first, actually. With the passage of existence. Now, like I said earlier, Lee was one of the original members of Malevolent Creation. I'm wondering. See that there? Is that the album, the front cover of Ten Commandments? Let's think at you. Uh... One sec. Yeah. You get that? Bit of a glare, but here we go. Yeah, you see it? Right. Is that him there? Who knows? But um Yeah. What we got in here? Oh, this is a limited edition. This is uh, only 500 copies. Got a. Uh, poster. 
the music's about to stop, so that's my uh, signal that I've probably been banging on too long. Um, I'll start getting on a bit. Yeah, that's the uh, orange. The uh, lyric sheet there. Yeah, I think that's awesome artwork. And there's a, they one of their recent T-shirts. They've put this all tying up with the Millennium artwork, which I thought was a cool little touch. Uh, let's put that poster back. Oh, also with Passage of Existence. Now, get the vinyl, get whatever format that you want, but I do highly recommend you pick up the uh, Digipack. Oh God, I've gone all blurry. Hold on, let it. Bear with me. I hope this will find its feet in a minute. All right, get the Digipack version of the album because the Digipack on the vinyl you only have 10 tracks. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, 10 tracks. On the Digipack, you get 12, but you also, um, this is in a slightly different order. So the Digipack version of the album is the full version of the album, and it's also in the right order. This camera's pissing me off, right, we're focused. So yeah, get the CD version of the album, especially as well as any other uh ah shit that's what i've got to tell you one sec oh no sorry one second bear with me there folks got the uh, <laughs> the cassette and here the uh, artwork is extended out so yeah I did just realized I've got this album on all three formats uh, this was on repulsive echo that's uh, yeah the rest is just lyrics ah a little mate is there as well. I wonder if that's a reference to Ten Commandments. I wonder if that's a little, what do they call it, Easter egg that I spotted there. I was getting all my stuff together. I put it all by my feet and I thought, I'm forgetting something, I'm forgetting something, and then it said it just at the end. Um, right, so we've got reissue of Rise to Power. I'll be nice and quick with this, guys. Um, Nice little golden, swirly, smoky effect there. That fucking camera's gone blurry again. Um, like I showed you earlier, the live shots. I don't know, this camera is pissing me off. Sorry, people, but... I think you get the idea with this, and then we get um, another poster. Yeah. This is also limited edition. Um, I've got 163 of 200. Our oh, camera's starting to focus now. That's good. Um, car. God damn it. And last but not least, Spiritual apocalypse. I don't know where it, it looks like the sun's finally coming out. 
And what one's this? This one's also limited edition. I'm guessing that's one of 500 as well, because I've got them from the same label. Nice, smoky, swirly, marbly effect on this one. Again, this album is absolutely phenomenal. Absolutely brilliant album this is. Um, and I'll show you the poster. They're a, um, that's one thing I forgot to mention actually, it's uh, Matt Barnes has joined the band now. So, Spiritual Apocalypse is a four piece, um, Passage of Existence is a five piece. One note I forgot there, but yeah, like I say, all the bands, everything, phenomenal back catalogue, monstrosity. I think that's about it now, I hope I haven't bored you too much. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Um, please like and share and all that good stuff. Um, Monster Nightmare Cabin has been going since uh, I think this summer. Um, about 15, 16 weeks I've been doing this now, so a couple of months. Uh, currently I've got about 80 subscribers. If I can get 100 subscribers by the new year, that'd be a fucking amazing. So, yeah, share this around if you liked what you saw. Um, tell us what you want me to do next. I mean, I've, I'm going to be doing less talk about. I'm going to be doing Morbid Angel, Hate Eternal, Brutality. Uh, Napalm, Death, Slayer, you name it, I'm doing it. Sinister, um, I'll be doing underrated things. I'll be carrying on with British Steel in the new year. Uh, Luke will be back week after next, and we're going to carry on with Maiden Cast. Um, thanks for watching this. Um, in the next week or so, in that little arsehole bit between Christmas and New Year, I'll be doing my top 10 albums of 2020. So, thanks again, everyone. Take care of yourselves. Thanks for watching. Heavy metal, eh? Nothing like it.